Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. I am sitting in a new place for my YouTube videos. I do film my lives from this chair, but I don't normally sit here to film a video. But I thought I would today. So hello from a new place. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I'm so thrilled to have you here. Today we are going to be talking about all the books that I have currently checked out from the library. I'm going to try to film a library checked out video every five or six weeks or so in order to show you what I have checked out, what's on my what's on my mind, what had been on my holds list, what has come in, and I'm very excited to show you what I have. I think there are only two in this pile that are carryovers from the last time, but because they're both middle grade, I held on to them, uh, and the rest are all new checkouts. So let's jump right in. I had a light bulb moment a couple weeks ago. I said, you know what? A lot of my NetGalley books are older and now they're out in the world. I don't need to wait for an ARC. I can get them on hold from the library. Since I don't read super much on my Kindle, I thought I would get some of my NetGalley books in print so that I can hopefully knock off some of them. So these are the ones that I have. This is a re-checkout. I've had this before, Quintessence by Jess Redman. This is a middle grade book about a young girl who goes outside or finds a fallen star in her yard and she makes it her mission to help the star get back up into the heavens. Uh, Jess Redman also wrote The Miraculous, which I have heard so much praise for, but I've not really heard very many people talk about this one. So this is going on my pile for middle grade March. I mean, it's on my library shelf. A lot of these are going to be middle grade, as you'll see. But I'm, I'm hoping to get to at least one of the Jess Redman books this year. And this one would knock out one of my NetGalley books. So that would be an awesome choice. I think this next one is a YA. Uh, the Hundred Lies of Lizzie Lovett by Chelsea Sidoti. I don't think I've heard very much good stuff about this one. Actually, I haven't heard very many people talk about it at all. It came out like four years ago. I want to say this is one of the early books that I, that I was approved for on NetGalley. Yeah, 2017. So four, five years ago, four years ago. And I don't know really anything about it. I do love the cover. I think it's a YA. Everyone has their own version of the truth. It says, Lizzie Lovett had the perfect life. That was her first lie. Uh, Hawthorne wasn't trying to insert himself into a missing person's investigation, or maybe she was. But that's only because Lizzie Lovett's disappearance is the one fascinating mystery their sleepy town has ever had. Bad things don't happen to popular girls like Lizzie Lovett, and Hawthorne is convinced she'll turn up at any moment, which means the time for speculation is now. So Lizzie Lovett goes missing, and Hawthorne is convinced that he can help find her. So we'll see about that one. I am really excited about this one, Shadow Among, Among Sheaves by Naomi Stevens. This is a biblical fiction. So it's a historical fiction about Bible characters. Um, a timeless, beautiful allegory. I guess it's not biblical fiction. It's an allegory of the biblical love story of Ruth and Boaz, which I love. <laughs> I love the story of Ruth in the Bible. It's a four chapter book of the Bible. It's very small. And it's just a, a wonderful story about a woman who marries into this family. And then her husband, her sister-in-law's husband, her father-in-law all pass away. So these three women are left together and she stays with her mother-in-law. Instead of going back to her own birth family, she stays with her mother-in-law, travels to a new land. And it's just a beautiful love story, actually, <laughs> of redemption. And there's a kinsman redeemer. So I'm really interested in, in this allegory of that Ruth and Boaz story. I think it's going to be Lovely, lovely, lovely. The fourth book that I have, which is also one of my net galley picks, is called After the Bloom by Leslie Shimo Takahara. And this it tells the story of Lily, who goes missing from her home in the mid 1980s. Her daughter is not surprised by this. Apparently her mother has had some disassociation and has gone missing before. In the course of trying to find her, like part of their history comes out. And I believe her mother spent some time in a Japanese internment camp during World War II uh, in California. So I think that's going to play a part in the family history. And it sounds kind of heartbreaking family drama, but also with this backdrop of internment camps of um, World War II era. So I just really am interested in that one as well. I don't know if I will get to these, honestly, those three in March. I may renew them. I feel like they're pretty backlist now. I might be able to renew them and see if I can hold on to them for a little longer. I'm hoping to get to some of the middle grade ones though. And speaking of middle grade, let's let's dive in. I have a few others that are not middle grade, but let's do the middle grade ones next. I have two that I'm carrying over from my last library checkout haul because I really want to read these. They are um, The Incredible 
The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone by Jacqueline Moriarty. Again, I heard so much praise for this on the Currently Reading podcast from Meredith. And it's about Bronte, whose parents either are dead or missing, and they leave a will, a very detailed will, which sends Bronte on an adventure and sends her to, to some of her extended family who have, who each have a specific gift as in ability or talent um, that's slightly magical or supernatural in some way. And Bronte Metalstone meets all of these extended family members and has to go on almost like a scavenger hunt through her family based on the will of her parents. So it sounds like a lovely, fun adventure, family dynamics. It can fill a couple of the prompts for Middle Grade March, and I'm very interested in this one. So I held on to that. And I also held on to Jacqueline Woodson's Before the Ever After because I love Jacqueline Woodson. I think she writes in such a poetic way. This is a super short story about a, a boy and his father. And I believe his father was a pro sports player, football maybe. Um, and then because of injuries and concussions is unable to play anymore. So I'm not sure what's going to happen from there, but I, I'm always very interested in reading more from Jacqueline Woodson. I did pick up a book for a read along that's happening or a kind of mini book group book club. I don't know what they're calling it. Read along, I think. Kate Howe and Christy Lewis and Mary from Happily Ever Ash and quite a handful of other lovely ladies are hosting a group read of Miracles on Maple Hill by Virginia Sorensen. I I was absolutely interested because number one, a group read of a middle grade book, uh, count me in. Number two, I believe this is a Newbery winner from 1950s. And I just am I'm excited to participate in a group read. So I was thrilled that my library had it and it came in so quickly. So I got this. It's definitely on my TBR for March. In some of my comments, I forget in, in the past couple weeks in my middle grade videos, starting with the middle grade historical fiction recommendations that I gave earlier on in the month. A couple people mentioned this book to me, more than one person, two or three people mentioned this book. And so I went right into my library and put it on hold and it came in. And that's Words on Fire by Jennifer A. Nielsen. And this is a World War II historical fiction. So this takes place in Lithuania during World War II. Some soldiers insist that everyone must become Russian. They have banned Lithuanian books, religion, culture, and even the language. But Audra knows her parents are involved in something secret and perilous. And that has to do with books and words. Anything that... <laughs> combines a book about books with World War II. Can you say book thief? <laughs> but I love I love that combination of how books and words are so powerful, even in the midst of a war setting. So yeah, I um, when when this was recommended to me a couple times, I knew that it was a book that I had to read. <laughs> so I threw that in my holds. I remember a little while ago, um, Christy Lewis and a couple other people I think have heard, I've heard talk about this book, um, The 21 Balloons. This is a Newbery winner and it's by William Penney, Pien Penney, William Penney Dubois, Dubois. I don't know how to say that. It's a little tiny book. When did it win the Newbery? Let's see. In 1947. So this is a 1940s book. And it's a little tiny thing, but I am hoping to knock out a bunch of Newberries. And for some reason, I just had it on my mind and I threw it in my cart. So that is the 21 Balloons. And I don't know anything about it. Let's see. Professor William Waterman Sherman just wants to be alone. So he decides to take a year off and spend it crossing the Pacific Ocean in a hot air balloon, the likes of which no one has ever seen. But when he's found after just three weeks floating in the Atlantic among the wreckage of 20 hot air balloons, the world is naturally eager to know what happened. How did he end up with so many balloons? And in the wrong ocean. I don't know. How did he end up there? He started in the Pacific, ended up in the Atlantic with lots more balloons. I'm intrigued. I'm definitely intrigued. Another book that I put on hold is I Can Make This Promise by Christine Day. And um, as Katie and Amanda and I were talking through ideas of what we wanted to be our group read, this is one that got mentioned and it just sounded so good that I wanted to read it. This is an own voices story of an indigenous girl, a young girl who knows that she is part Native American and she gets adopted. So it deals with adoption as well. I just, um, I just was intrigued by this one. So I'm definitely hoping, definitely hoping to get to that one. <laughs> and the last middle grade that I have is a winner of the Newbery, one of the Newbery Honor books this year, and that is A Wish in the Dark by Christina Suntorvat. 
soon torn bot. Uh, she actually has another book that's a nonfiction, which I have to show in a haul in a couple of weeks uh, because I bought the other one. But she has two books that won Newbery Honors this year. That's amazing. Good job, Christine. Well done. <laughs> uh, this is, I believe, set in Thailand. Um, ma, 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 a boy on the run, a girl determined to find him, set in a Thai-inspired fantasy world. So it's a fantasy set in a Thai-inspired world. That's pretty cool. Her twist on Victor Hugo's Les Mis is a dazzling, fast-paced adventure that explores the difference between law and justice and asks whether one child can shine a light in the dark. I did not realize that this was going to be inspired or have influence from Les Miserables. That's amazing because I love that story. And set in a Thai-inspired fantasy world. I just feel like this is going to be so good. And I believe this author is Thai-American or just Thailand. Yes, she grew up Thai American, grew up in a small Texas town where she spent many childhood days behind the counter of her parents' Thai restaurant with her nose in a book. She now lives in Austin, Texas with her husband and two children. So yeah, oof. I'm very, very excited to read this one. And it won the Newbery Honor, one of the Newbery Honors this year. I just have three final books that I have checked out currently. I, after reading The Mystery of Mrs. Christie, I put The Mysterious Affair at Styles because this is one of the first... Hercule Poirot books, I believe. Yes, this is the first Poirot book. I don't know if it's her first overall or just the first Hercule Poirot. I can't keep saying it and it's hard for me to say. But um, yeah, so this is just a mystery. Maybe I will read it as and sort of partake in uh, March Mystery Madness. That is an option. I also have put this one on hold a long time ago when I did my anticipated reads for January, February, and March. This is one that I'm highly anticipating and it came in finally, The Nature of Fragile Things by Susan Meissner. I believe it just came out a couple weeks ago or a week ago, not that long ago anyways. This takes place in San Francisco during an earthquake and the fire involves the story of three different women whose lives are going to become entangled. I've heard that there's a bit of a mystery in here as well. Another one that might be a good fit for March Mystery Madness. I am just really excited. I love Susan Meisner so, so much. So I'm very excited. I've been anticipating this one. It may have to squeeze its way into some middle grade March. It's not middle grade, but it might have to be read. When I need a little, maybe I'll feel like I need a break in the middle of the month. I can pick that one up. And the last one, I'm not sure I'm going to get to this one. We'll see. But when I watched Bridgerton, I was curious about the book. And I don't know that I'm going to read it because it might be way too steamy for me, way too open door for me. But I can always skip ahead to those parts. But I just love, I love the, the setting. And I don't know, I really enjoyed the story. And so I grabbed The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. It had lots of holds on it. And this is the large print edition. All of them had lots of holds. So this is the first one that came in. So I don't mind reading large print. <laughs> I feel like it goes a little bit faster and I'm getting old. So I don't mind it. <laughs> but that is it. Those are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Those are the 14 books that I currently have checked out from the library. Let's see. We'll show two piles here. Can I do two piles? Oh, turn this. There we go. <laughs> Sorry for moving you, but I have two stacks, one non-middle grade and one middle grade. Those are the books that are checked out from the library right now. I would love to chat with you in the comments below. Have you heard of or read any of these books? Uh, are any of them already on your radar? Do you have a load of books checked out for middle grade March? The fun thing is I normally max out my library holds in the month of March to the max, 50 books, whatever I'm allowed to get, I have them all checked out. <laughs> but this year, because I only can put books on hold, I can't roam the shelves and just browse. I have a much more limited pile from the library, but that's good because that means I will be reading a lot more from my actual shelves, which is a good thing. So those are my current books. I hope the beginning of your middle grade March has started off well. I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody's reading. Let's chat down in the comments below about these books or about anything else. You guys know I love talking with you in the comments. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little bell so you know when I'm going to post a new video. Chat with me in the comments. All the good things that helps my channel. Check out all the information in the description box below. And I will be talking with you in another video very soon. Bye. Bye.